sustainability in higher education. Um, if you would have any questions, please shout because I only see my PowerPoint. I have not a shared screen somehow. Um, so if there's anything, please let me know. Um, I'll just keep talking. If you want to, you can interrupt me. Uh, feel free to do so. Uh, if not, I hope there is still enough time for questions afterwards. Um, I um, did part, I, I was coordinator in a sustainability project, which was called the DOHO project, which stands in Dutch for Duurzame uh, Ontwikkeling in Hoger Onderwijs. So sustainable development in higher education. And um, I was actually just the, the, the project coordinator who uh, took care of the link to education. The actual research was done by a colleague of mine, uh, Mr. Wim Lambrecht. Um, uh, so he was a lot more structured in this. The contents of the presentation, I just started with a short part, I don't know if it switches, um, on what is sustainable education today. I will then explain an instrument we use, which is called the Aisha instrument. And I will present a short case study of what we did at the university college. Um, and maybe my first question should be, uh, what is sustainable education to you? If any of you have an input, what, what could be sustainable education? What do you think of? You feel free to call anything. Do you have, because my presentation is not so much on the cultural or the heritage part of sustainability, it's really on sustainable education. Okay. Um, Maybe I'll just uh, situate then that what we saw as sustainable education um, was based on the Brundtland definition. And the Brundtland definition says sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. It's quite a general um, uh, definition. I think uh, that covers all the bases of what I want to talk about. I don't know why it always moves ahead two slides instead of what, excuse me. Um, so to us, what we saw is that today society deals with a lot of complex problems. I don't have to explain all of the problems I think to you, uh, financial crisis, environmental problems, social uh, inequity, but especially the connection. If I, uh, I gave a rather uh, a small example to my students uh, last week, for instance, if you look at what happens with the war these days, that also has an effect on energy prices, on food consumption, on uh, a lot of social uh, misery, uh, but suffering. So one thing happens and it has connections to everything. And the problem with our education today is that it is unable to address these complex problems. Now, our educational program, programs are still um, disciplinary. They're focused on science or language or history or uh, social elements. So um, it is difficult for our students to think what we call out of the box, to think about uh, questions in a more complex way. What you do here has an effect on areas A, B, C, and D. And next to that, um, there's also a lack of future thinking and of system thinking. Our students are not aware enough of the large systems that are uh, in our society today of a very big influence. Huh? One, one of my students didn't understand, for instance, why the gas prices were rising so much and why that was less of a problem in the USA huh? because we are much more dependent so they, they don't see the big system so we saw kind of a, a number of problems and I'm talking now for instance at the level of secondary education but it was the same 
at the level of higher education. And so we used the triple me P model by Cavagnaro, um, which is, I assume that all of you will know the triple P uh, model, you know, which is the light green triangle and uh, the balance between uh, people, planet and profit. Um, but Cavagnaro actually made this triple P model uh, transferable to three levels. Okay, and so you would have the dark green uh, triangle, which is the individual level, the level of a person. Yeah? And there she called not the elements, not people, planet, profit, but she uh, said, care for me, care for you and me, and care for all. So that's an individual level. Then you would have an organizational level of sustainability where you would work with the people, planet, profit. And then above that, you would have a societal level where you would look at economic, environmental and social value. Um, to give you a concrete example, if you would look, for instance, at a teacher shortage these days, which is a very big problem here in Flanders, you could say, OK, at the individual level, now we're situated in the corner of care for me and you. And uh, you could try to look at increasing well-being of an individual. At the organizational level, you're looking at people. And then a school could look at how can I improve the human capital in my organization? Yeah? For instance, invest in teamwork, yeah? co-teaching, things like that. And at the societal level, yeah, the Flemish government could you could look at the social value of this problem. Yeah? How could they counter teacher dropouts? Uh, so I hope it, it makes clear what the three levels of this model are. Next to that, um, as a basis for our research, we saw, uh, we looked at, what, okay, what is a school? Now, in this case, a higher education, but it is perfectly transferable to, for instance, secondary education, basic education. Uh, and uh, we saw a school a little bit like the little uh, four pillar temple that you see there. Uh, a school, if you look at it from a sustainable point of view, always has a vision. Uh, and the vision is the basis. Uh, um, it's the day to day touchstone, so to say that you base all the other pillars on. And if you then look at the four pillars, uh, there's three of them that can be found in any school. Uh, one is operations, uh, in which you see a school as a company that employs people, has an environmental impact, has to reach certain standards, and so on, as an organization. The second pillar is education. Uh, what kind of education do we give? How do we give it? How do we teach? To whom do we teach it? So that for schools is our core business. Uh, is like for a company, I don't know, selling cars. Yeah, for us, that's our core business. The third pillar is society. Yeah, every school plays a role in society. Yeah, that can be in general, uh, along with other schools. For instance, our school is part of a huge network of other schools, uh, as well as schools run by the Institutes, as schools, uh, Catholic schools in Leuven. Um, but next to that, we can also look at it, for instance, at an individual level of a school. To give you an example, we are a large school situated on a campus, a historic campus where we also find an elderly home, a child care, primary school, um, kindergarten, a farm. And uh, we can work together with them. That's also to play a role in society as a school. And we did, for instance, in, when we, we became Strafste School for the people from Flanders, maybe you will know. And we especially became Strafse School because they liked the fact that we worked together with the other stakeholders on our campus. 
And then the fourth pillar is the research pillar, which in this case I'm not focusing up as much because it's especially a pillar that is important for higher education. Um, in higher education, every Flemish Institute of Higher Education needs a number of research projects, which is not so at a secondary level, but also there, there are possibilities. Right? You could set up cooperation with other actors that can help us with a form of action research. Now, this project, for instance, for me, is a form of research, low level, not fundamental research, of course, that helps me to um, make my institution more sustainable, so to say. Okay. And so everything is topped, this vision and these four pillars are then topped by evaluation, by reporting, because mm -hmm. otherwise you don't know, of course, what you're doing well, whether your four pillars yeah, translate your vision. Yeah? So you have to monitor everything you do. I just want to see if there were questions so far, because this is the, the theoretical background. Um, Everybody who is still with me? Hello? Just trying to find you. Yeah, no questions so far? No? Okay. Good, then I wanted to um, go to the second um, level of my presentation which is the Aisha instrument. Uh, the Aisha instrument is actually an auditing instrument. Huh? Um, when it was developed, it was developed by an organization called DHO, Duzam Hoge Onderwijs, by Mr. Nico Rorda. And he developed it uh, because there was a great need for a list of criteria that schools could use to see if they were doing well in sustainability or not. And as a basis for this um, uh, research instrument, he used a, 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 an existing, um, what should I say, tool, which is the EFQM model. Are you familiar with the EFQM model? Mm, I assume so. Okay, the EFQM model uh, is a self-evaluation tool to measure the strengths and the weaknesses of an organization and to improve it. And so there is a Dutch version of it and developed by the INK. Uh, and that was then adapted to uh, be used on sustainability in higher education. Okay. Um, Why can this be interesting for schools? That's yeah, such an instrument, quite a uh, well, theoretical framework up to now. Uh, why is this part interesting for schools? Why, it is in, why is it interesting to use such a model, such a tool to look at your own sustainability? Well, first of all, part, schools are part of society. Um, uh, if I just look at our students, for instance, our students uh, last year, two years ago, they participated in the climate marches, for instance. Yeah? And these were, of course, triggered by society, yeah? by the climate debate, by uh, what Greta Thunberg was doing, and so on. Um, and so our students gave a clear signal to us as a school and to uh, the government that they cared about this. Yeah? So there you can see schools are part of the society. Yeah? Next to that, schools also have this educational role in the society. Yeah? We supported the fact that they participated in the climate marches, but uh, we of course also had to give them information. Yeah? What is this climate debate? Why is it important? Yeah. So that's where we did our, our, our core our job. Yeah. We explained how debates yeah, involved others in teaching about sustainable development goals. Yeah. 
So we were triggered by society. We then informed, educated our uh, students. And then, of course, we are an institution of education ourselves. So we can also look at our own sustainability. Now, our students challenged us to look at our own climate impact. Yeah, they asked us what our view was on climate issues. Yeah. And we, for instance, developed special classes. We also developed a number of projects on clean air, on water pollution, yeah, which integrated sustainability in our school curricula. So there you can see that for schools working on sustainable development um, applies to all three roles they have, the societal role, the educational role, and the organizational role, yeah, to this triple C, a triple P, sorry, um, triangle. Okay. So if I uh, summarize this, why is it interesting for schools? Because a sustainable school can become a more sustainable organization. And if we teach them on sustainability and if we give sustainable education, then we become a more sustainable society, which is in the end what we want. We want education to help prepare our students for the future and to think about these complex problems with all these effects everywhere. Okay. Everybody still with me? It's really weird to be teaching online again. I'm very sorry. Okay. If we then look at the tool itself, this Aisha tool, um, it is based on the Deming circle. Yeah? The Deming circle is a circle that is often used in educational plans. Uh, it is very simple. It's plan, do, check, and act. Uh, it's a circle for quality management. Uh, first, you plan something, then you carry out your plan, then you check if you achieve with your plan what you wanted to achieve, and if that doesn't work, you have to act, you have to adapt the plan. I assume that this Deming circle is, is uh, familiar to most of you. And so the Aisha uh, instrument works with this circle and it has 20 different categories that can be connected to this Deming circle. Uh, and the categories are divided into five uh, big fields of attention, they call it. Um, the five fields of attention can be linked to the plan, do, check, act model that you see here again. Uh, so the first two fields are in the plan area, the second two fields are in the do area, and the last two fields are in the check area. And I'll illustrate with the next uh, slide, which makes it a little bit more um, clear. I think these are um, the 20 criteria that the Aisha instrument uh, surveys, uh, researches. Uh -huh. And you can see two of them, vision and policy, and expertise are situated in the plan uh, part of the Deming circle. Then the educational goals and methodology and the education contents are in the do part of the uh, circle. And then the results assessment is in the check part. Uh, so each of these fields were subdivided. Uh, so vision and policy, where did you look at? When we studied vision and policy, which aspects of our schools did we analyze? Well, first, do we have vision? Do we have a policy? How do we communicate on it? And what is our environmental management internally? Huh? Uh, that is the first element. Next to that, second element, expertise. What kind of network do we have? Each time of, when it comes to sustainable development, of course. Do we have an expert group on sustainable development? If not, do we have a plan to get one? Yeah? Staff development, how are we going to inform our staff on becoming more sustainable? Yeah? And how can we uh, enlarge this expertise by doing some research? Yeah? 
Next to that, you have the other three, and education. What kind of education do we give? What is the role of the teacher? How do we evaluate students even? Now, student examination. What does our curriculum look like? Uh, what's our specialty? And then all of this, the first four um, fields of attention, have to be checked. Huh? So how do we assess the results we reach in one, two, three, and four? At the level of our staff, of our students, of external so uh, stakeholders of society, and in other, uh, in our professional field, in, with other educators. Okay. So these were the 20 criteria that the two, um, should I say, researches, and each of the criteria can be reached at five different levels, five different stages. Um, here you see the stages. Stage one is, okay, we're looking at, I don't know, vision. Uh, do we have a vision that only addresses separate parts? Uh, for instance, do we have a vision only for our environmental impact? Uh, or not? Stage two is, if we have these different visions, we have a vision on staff management, we have a vision on uh, environmental impact, we have a vision on um, students and how we do follow up on students. And are these connected? If so, then you're at the second stage. Then it becomes a process if you connect these different elements. Uh, third stage uh, is at the system oriented level. If we have all these visions, if they are all connected, do we then evaluate them? Yeah? Do we use a feedback process? Are we sure that we are working well with our students, with our uh, personnel, with our environmental impact? Uh -huh. Stage four, is it part of a chain or a process? Uh, and stage five, is this then integrated in society? Uh, so you can see that each of the stages makes it more complex. Okay. I will try to illustrate this more clearly when we get to the example of the questionnaires on the IESHA. I will show you the, how they translate this in the different criteria. Uh, uh, the first thing you still have to know is the AISHA process has four steps. If you want to do an AISHA assessment, um, it's important to know that it requires some preparation. You can't just say, okay, let's do this tomorrow. Okay? Because uh, we performed actually seven of these audits, and each audit was prepared with an external and an internal leader. So we would have an external pe person from the DHO uh, organization that came to do the actual assessment and that always was prepared with a person who was coordinating this at the level of the school. Okay. So uh, we, they got together and they uh, looked at who do we uh, invite to assess this. Uh, how do we organize it? When do we do it? Uh, once all the, I call it, random elements were uh, decided, then participants were invited, uh, because you always need it for an assessment like this. We work with between 10 and 20 people, and each of those participants um, were uh, invited, of course, and were introduced to this tool. Now, we, we told them beforehand what was going to happen. Because they had to do, before they we do the group assessment, we all did an individual assessment. So every participant by itself looked at the questions even before they came to the meeting and gave individual scores you know, based on their own experiences, on their own view. Okay. That's the individual scoring. Yeah. So all these four, three steps, the preparation, the introduction, individual scoring, 
or before the actual consensus meeting. And the consensus meeting is a meeting that takes all day, so it's quite an, an uh, it has quite some impact. Yeah, with 10 to 15 people, sometimes 20, depending on the size of the school, um, that you put together in one room for a whole day. And then they talked about all of the criteria that you just saw. Yeah. And it was especially important that this group of participants was a very, um, it had a wide variety. We didn't only invite teachers or management. We also invited students, we invited uh, support staff, yeah? we had the janitor and the cleaning lady and so on. They all came to participate in this day. We even invited external stakeholders if they played a huge role. For instance, if we looked at uh, there was a department with nurses, they had a very heavy impact on internships they did with the university. Um, um, hospital next door, we invited people from the university hospital. Yeah, so you need some commitment to do an assessment like this. And so on this page, I'm going to show you how one of these criteria looked like. So this is one of the 20 criteria that you discuss with this whole group. First, individually. Now first, before everybody comes to this meeting, Everybody looks at this and reads the explanations. Uh, for instance, this one is on staff development. Uh, stage one says staff development and sustainability depends on individual initiative. Okay. Okay, so if somebody wants to learn about sustainability, they can follow a course individually. Okay. Second stage is there is a staff development plan in sustainability. It's mainly short term. And for the execution of this plan, some facilities are made available by management. If I would give a concrete example again, you could say as a school, OK, we want to become a MOSS school. Now, MOSS is a label you can get here in Belgium if you want to um, invest in environmental care. Uh, and we want to become a mosque school, and so we um, erect a working group. Yeah? We get together with a, a couple of people who think this is important. Yeah? This is more than the individual level. This is already getting people together on a certain topic. Stage three says the need of the organization for expertise is known. The development plan sorry, is based on a match between the need the individual wishes of the staff members uh, for training and courses, and it's mainly middle or long term. OK, so coming back to my example again, you could say, OK, we try to reach this mass school label on a yearly on a yearly basis. Uh, it's something you can try to develop each year. Uh, there you're already in a system. There you go. Next stage, the chain. Sustainability staff development plan is long term. Yeah. It includes a policy towards appointments, for instance, uh, introduction of new staff members. And there's an explicit relationship with the strategic policy of the organization. Yeah. So there you could see at OK, we have MOSS uh, school label. We want new people involved in this working group. That could be an element that you discuss during um, a feedback talk with your own um, personnel. Yeah. Or you could look at involving people from the logistics department, the technical department. And then stage five looks at the society oriented. So there you could see at, OK, if we were a school, how can we bring this to the rest of the campus, to other stakeholders? Yeah. So this is one criterion that you discuss with all the people there about this. At which stage are we as a school? Okay. Are we in stage one still? Are we already in stage three or maybe only stage two? Yeah. And then you get everybody 
has this overview and then you select a stage and you can give some comments. For instance, I could say, oh, OK, I think we're at stage two because I've seen a moss label next to the door of the school. And uh, I know that we have a working group, but I don't think they work together yet with the logistics department. Okay. So what you end up with then is a score form, an individual score form that looks like this, where everybody scores one of the or all 20 criteria at a certain level. Huh? And because with the previous element, they have written down some comments, they have written down why they scored at this, at this level, you have a, a tool to start a discussion. Okay. So when everybody has done that, that's when you get together, you put 20 people in a room, and then you start discussion. Okay, at which level are we on vision? Huh? Two people say one, two people say two. Why do you say level one? Why do you say level two? And you try to reach a consensus per criteria that you do. Huh? You don't only write this scheme, of course, that you see here, but during the whole meeting all day long, there is one person who takes notes uh, uh, purely on the discussion, on anything that is mentioned. So everything is noted down. Uh, in the end, what do you get? Uh, this is what we call a visual representation of the discussion. So in the beginning, it's empty, like you see on the left. Afterwards, it is filled like you see on the right. And so the red dots are um, uh, the consensus on where are we today as a school, yeah? at the level of vision, of students, of education, and so on. And the blue arrows point out where we want to get to. Yeah? So for instance, uh, you could look at aspect number 1.2. Yeah? We were only at level one. Yeah, that's where the red dot is. But we want to reach level three. Yeah. And so because we want to grow extensively, you see the little yellow star at the end. That for us is one of the priorities of our plan. Yeah. So this is how you then get it in the report. Yeah. For instance, here you see the first um, Part of the report where it says, okay, the present situation is stage one. Yeah, why? Because of the green elements, the arguments given in green. The desired situation is stage two. It has a high priority, and then it already mentions how we can reach this stage two for one element. Now, so this whole Aisha report, most of the time, is between five and ten pages long. Well, five is a little bit short. Ten. Okay. Um, so I'm going to shortly now, in the last 10 minutes, show you the case study. Yeah, so we um, used the audits to improve our uh, school yeah, and to develop, to develop, sorry, uh, to design a model with some guiding principles that can be used by others. Uh, so we wanted with this audit to get an overview of where were we, yeah, where are the traces of sustainable development already visible, vi vi visible in our school, and how can we grow? What's the plan to grow in sustainable development for the whole institution? Uh, and I have to give you a little bit background. So the, the school I was talking about that we did this, is the uh, today it's called the UCLL. Uh, it is a big uh, university college, eight campuses, 15,000 students. But at the time when we carried out this project, it was a lot smaller. It only had about 5,000 students uh, spread out over seven departments. Uh, and they were all located here in Leuven. These days, a part of them is also located in uh, Limburg. So we made an implementation model, oh, this one, Oops. Yeah. that had seven steps. 
Um, and those steps could be adapted to each of the department, each of the seven departments that um, we implemented the model in, uh, or they could be at a, a coordinated, at a more strategic management level. And so, as you can tell, the first three steps um, are still at the planning level. Yeah? If you remember, plan, do, check, act. If we look at step one, two, and three, vision, mission, steering committee, those are in a plan part of your um, of your project. Yeah? So what we did is we, um, after we did all the audits, yeah, we had a whole bunch of data to work with because one person said, okay, well, we have, I don't know, sustainable development as a subject in our chemistry department. And another person said, well, with the secretary offices, we don't have that yet. Yeah. So we got together a steering committee. The steering committee consisted of a core group of one to two uh, teachers per department. Uh, and then uh, some people from management, from the central management of the UCLR. And with the steering committee, we developed a joint vision, a joint mission statement, and a policy plan. Yeah? Based on all the research we did with the Aisha instrument. Yeah? Uh, we, inv inventory, we made an inventory of 80 to 90 existing initiatives. And based on that, we saw, okay, good. This is our strong point. This is what uh, we as a school stand for. For instance, step four was the implementation in each domain at three levels. Yeah. Um, overall, strategically, yeah, regarding, for instance, network communication. As a school, we became an active partner in a network here on sustainability in Leuven. And yeah, we were not that before, but yeah, it was interesting to get more links on sustainability. Uh, uh, so networking, communication, same thing. We worked on how do we communicate? Uh, as, as simple as do we use recycled paper? Yes or no? Uh, uh, do we impose certain limits on the amount of copies that can be made for students? Uh, that's policy. Um, so we looked at each of the domains per department yeah, and overall for the general implementation. Yeah, so it's not that every department became partner in this network. Uh, uh, somebody at the central level became partner in this network and then distributed the uh, information to the relevant departments. Uh, education, for instance, um, if you look at competences for sustainable development, yeah, they're defined. What we did is we looked at all our competence matrices. Every study division in higher education has a competence matrix. And we looked at all of them and we thought, OK, where are the links to sustainable development in our competence matrices for our students? Uh, uh, we also did smaller educational uh, projects. Yeah, for instance, in the business studies, yeah, they looked at sustainable, sorry, um, uh, entrepreneurship. And we created a subject on that, which wasn't existing yet. Okay. Operations, of course, uh, we looked at our own operations, where, uh, uh, like I already said, uh, we looked, for instance, at ecological aspects, we decided to do energy audits of all the buildings uh, spread out over seven different campuses. And for instance, one of the uh, results we found, uh, really funny, was that one room in one, one of the schools was heated at 27 degrees Celsius, 24, 24, seven days, all year long, including holidays, nights, everything. Uh, these are things that you only get 
you, you only find out when you decide to do all these energy scans, for instance. Okay, so step four, step five, six, and seven again are at this level, this check level of the Deming circle. Huh? We use the Aishi audits. We not only did them once, we repeated them after two years to see, okay, have we moved forward? Huh? We tried to reach uh, what they call Aishi certificates. Huh? If all of your department would reach level one, huh? you would get a first star certificate. Uh, which would then be handed out by a representative from the DHO department. Um, so each of these elements, yeah, the, the Aisha assessment for us was only a starting point yeah, to use the results we got from that to develop a plan on all levels to introduce sustainable development. Yeah. What are two conclusions we could make? One, that's why I asked in the beginning, what is the, what do you understand under sustainable education? There's a broad range of expectations. Yeah, so people have very different definitions on very different ideas on what you can do regarding sustainability. Yeah. And as I said, the implementation model was the first phase to develop our institution further. Huh? If uh, you're interested in this implementation model, in this model that you could use, uh, we actually wrote a book on it, which is called Duurzaam Hoger Onderwijs, Sustainable Higher Education. But it's a model that you can transfer to basically any educational organization. Okay, I think I uh, I've reached the end of my presentation. I don't know if it was all clear, so I am looking forward to any questions you might have. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to find the end of my sharing. Oh, there we are. Stop the sharing. Okay, so um, please feel free to shoot. <laughs> Any questions you have? I hope it was a bit clear because also for me it was a bit rusty on everything we did. This was a three year project, of course. There were no questions in the in the chat, I noticed, but there was an interesting remark mm -hmm. um, of Antonella. I don't know if she wanted to add something on her remark. Mm -hmm. Hi, good morning, everybody. Hello. Yes, I, w I was uh, thinking uh, while listening uh, at uh, Helen that uh, uh, the, the relationship uh, of uh, sustainable education uh, with the society passes uh, also through the connection of uh, generations. Mm -hmm. And uh, until the education happens, uh, closely in the educational system and uh, it is not porous enough to establish liaisons with the rest of the society, it risks to have a, a smaller impact. And in particular on sustainability issues, the combination of the uh, awareness on sustainability among the generations is particularly important. In, in a way, our generation, and I'm 65, so I belong to the older generation, needs to be educated by the new generations. It is not only the traditional way that we educate the younger generation. There is also a back education that is needed because in particular on sustainability issues, this is relevant. We didn't do very well our work. So this was my comment. I can, I can agree on that. Uh, I. I learned at least as much from the students when they came with very valuable suggestions. For instance, our IT students, they counted the fact that uh, the laptops they used 
were often uh, not recycled and that they wanted some kind of uh, repair service, for instance. Uh, or um, what I did not touch upon, which is not part of, of this tool, is, for instance, this, uh, how should I say, sustainability through the years, learning from each other. Huh? Also, cultural sustainability. There, there is nothing on heritage. It's something completely different than the, the talk we had before this. Um, but I think those are also aspects that can be used that are important in education to learn from the past and from the future. Um, that is, to me, it, it should be well, like a whole globe. Like I, I like the, the Cavagnaro triangles at the different levels, but maybe we should also add a level on um, place and time uh, to look at sustainable development from a certain place at a certain time. Ria? Yes, very interesting. Uh, and so I think that um, when you started, you, you gave that very interesting definition uh, from sustainability, where you started from, mm -hmm. and then you talked about problems uh, of educational system, mm -hmm. and then you you talked about a lack of future thinking. I think you indeed we can see it broader and and talk about the lack of intergenerational uh, mm -hmm. thinking of historical thinking. Also, we have to, as Antonella mentions, look backwards uh, as much as looking forwards. And I, I was wondering if, um, if indeed you could uh, you could uh, add a fifth pillar on your temple, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can we can think on it further because I, I think it's very interesting the tool you you introduced uh, a fifth pillar which we could uh, when it comes to a school system talk about the school culture the school heritage the school I don't know but but all the, these aspects. Um, Maybe, maybe we could uh, we could broaden it that way. Yeah, certainly, I think. Yeah, it's it's a it's very important that the I think the model that that shows it the, with the four pillars, it's especially aimed at uh, higher education, uh, which often, well, universities do have a longer tradition. But for instance, the university college that I worked at was a young college. It was a recently erected. Um, so they did not see, I think, the historic component as much as we, for instance, see it here in our school uh, or when we talk about heritage. Um, so uh, that's certainly a good idea to, to add maybe this fifth pillar uh, to the temple. That's a good thing when you're building a temple, you can make it as, as you want it as it represents your organization, institution, uh, whatever you need. Yeah. And then I, I was wondering, Elaine, when I, I remember our uh, playground circles project, mm -hmm. where there was the level of uh, creating participation, mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, where where should we, where sh which should you, where should you put it in your you in, you, you gave different levels to um, me. What we do with our campus is certainly society related. Uh, it's, it's our role as a school towards a broader society. You know, how can we work together? Like I talked about the um, the Strafste School, uh, we, we got explicit uh, explicitly mentioned because our uh, we had to um, uh, enroll in a competition for this and we won this because we showed that the school is part of a bigger whole. Because in this competition, we also involve the people from the nursing home, we involve the little kids from the primary school. Um, and so I think the societal role as an education is certainly also an aspect, an, an important aspect of sustainable development. Because if you just keep on talking about sustainable development as a theoretical framework, you have to link it to, to your context, to your society. Uh, so to me, that's uh, the societal level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we go to the next uh, talk? No. Okay. Thank you very much. See yeah. you in a minute. I close yes. down this uh, this meeting. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. bye.